Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today we're going to be building up the 700R4. This unit came out of a 92 GM car, truck, or SUV. I'm not sure which, but it's going to be retroed into a 55 Chevy. So, non-computer controlled application, so which means we're going to be installing a um, TCI internal external uh, TCC lockup kit for the converter as well as a few other upgrades that I always install uh, when I do 700R4s. I don't, strictly speaking, ever build a stock 700R4 or, for that matter, a 4L60E. There's always a few things that I do, like, for example, shift kits. Uh, I always install a correction shift kit, no matter if it's a stock application or if it's a, just a mild build. Uh, high performance, they obviously get much different shift kits or recalibration um, components, parts, whatnot, but for just a standard stock or mild performance build, uh, there are some things that I always like to do because just simply the cost benefit is so much in, in favor of doing it. So I'll go over part selection, uh, discuss some key considerations, and then uh, once uh, we do that, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so as mentioned, we got the uh, TCI kit and the Transgo kit. Uh, we have a new TCC solenoid we'll be installing, and we're also going to be providing a new detent cable or TV cable. Uh, you never ever want to reuse your TV cable. Uh, they tend to get worn out after about 50 or 60,000 miles or so, and what will happen is once you have your adjustment in place over time, uh, that uh, you know the cable kind of loosen up and you'll lose that adjustment, that tension, and you, know, you run the risk of burning up your 3-4 clutch packs. So, Always purchase a new cable whenever uh, rebuilding any TV-based uh, transmission, so 700R4s, 204Rs, AODs, etc. So we're going to be doing a Corvette servo. That's one of the minimal upgrades I do. It's kind of a standard base package. Um, I never use the 553 or 554 servos. The VET servos give you uh, about, I want to say, 15 or 20 percent more apply surface area, and they only cost like 10 or 12 bucks, so it just makes sense to do it. For the pump, I always like to install a new uh, boost and reverse boost valve. Uh, these are, I believe, a 473 boost valve and just a standard uh, reverse boost. Um, one thing I'll do is I'll grind this land off here on the pressure regulator valve, and then uh, the shift kit comes with like a new um, snap ring as well as a uh, new pump PR spring. I'll also install new vanes in all my 700R4s, 4L60Es. Um, and I'll have the pump body machined. It's almost invariably there's, you know, a ton of scoring. It's not perfectly flat. There's some, you know, other imperfections in it that you want to make sure that you clean up. So it's just better to be safe than sorry. Just machine it flat. And then, you know, we'll check clearances before we go back together with it. But um, it mitigates the risk of, you know, any kind of premature failures uh, once it goes back on the road. Stator work looks good, so nothing other than just bushing replacement uh, will be done to that, and then we'll just reassemble it as normal. Uh, new accumulator pistons, uh, the 1-2, the forward, and the 3-4. Again, um, something that you always want to replace. You never want to reuse your accumulator pistons. They, get to te they tend to get worn out here in the pin bores so that you know when you're rocking it from side to side on the old piston more often than not you're going to have side play and then uh, that equates to a leak in that circuit and ultimately result in you know burnt up applied elements so uh, you want to make sure that you uh, you always replace those those uh, accumulator pistons Okay, so a cheap upgrade you can do with all your 700s is install late model uh, tubular steels for the reverse input and the low reverse clutch pack out of a late 4L60E. I believe these went into all 4L60Es 98 and up. And, you know, these little slots cut into the uh, steel plate allow for um, better lubrication to frictions as well as more effective fluid flow so you have a you know, little bit less drag. So it's again just a good upgrade. As far as the drum itself, um, it's fine to reuse the uh, later 700R4 drums with the aluminum piston, or you can retro a 4L60E drum, but I would not, under any circumstances, use the early 700R4 reverse drums, uh, the kind that came with the uh, steel apply piston and where the bleeder ball is in the drum itself. Uh, you know, if you have one of those, 
more than likely it's going to need some sort of machine work. It's not going to be, you know, perfectly flat on the band surface. So at that point, you might as well just buy a new drum. And, uh, you know, the 4L60E drum is just simply a better drum. So a lot of my updating and or um, upgrading comes uh, into play when we talk about the forward drum. So for all 700 R4s and early 4L60Es, I will install a set of late model 4L60E bonded pistons along with the updated return spring. I never like to reuse aluminum pistons. They're you know, prone to all kinds of problems. The forward piston likes to crack. Uh, the lip seals aren't nearly as effective on those as they uh, are on the ceiling, you know, as far as the ceiling surface on these bonded pistons. And they're just simply a lot more durable and reliable. Always replace your forward sprag assembly. These are the 29 element board Warner sprags. And if you're working with an earlier 700, 82 to 86, uh, that came with the smaller, I think it's 24 elements, uh, sprag assembly, you always want to, you know, replace that with the larger sprag gear. Uh, those earlier sprags were prone to, you know, issues and failure, uh, especially if you're doing something high performance. Uh, the last thing you need is to lose all movement and drive um, because your sprag rolled over and failed. The other thing I will always do with all 700s is install a number 7 apply cage or apply ring out of a 4L60E. Um, the legs here are a little bit shorter. I want to say about maybe a quarter of an inch shorter, maybe three-eighths of an inch compared to the ones that came in the early and the late 700R4s. Um, the earliest 700R4 had the longest legs, so that translated to um, having the thinnest steels compared to subsequent um, uh, vintages. Uh, the later 700R4s came with a number four apply ring. A little bit shorter than the early ones, but not as short as uh, the number seven in terms of the legs. So the number seven will give you more flexibility in terms of adding additional frictions and steels or running a 4L60E spec 3-4 uh, clutch pack that features the 110,000 thick steels, uh, which are better for longevity in general. Always do a complete bushing kit. Uh, all your transmissions that you build, wherever possible, you always want to install new bushings. And there's a few units out there that where there's just simply um, no bushing kits available for them, so you more or less have to, you know, hope the existing bushings are in good enough shape. So bearings are soaking in fresh transmission fluid. So sun shell, always replace with a hardened and heat treated version. Never ever reuse your existing sun shell. Uh, these splines like the strip or the neck will separate from the body and then you'll lose reverse, second, and fourth gear. So that's no good. Alright, that's the rest of the gear train. Uh, nothing else really to discuss other than just, like I said before, replace your bushings. Uh, here are some late model 4L60E tubular steels that we're going to be putting here. And uh, the wave plate. Just know that uh, the low reverse piston uh, for the later 700R4s and up is shorter than earlier generations and it, the uh, earlier 700s do not take a waved plate. Okay, so that's an overview of the build. Uh, if there's anything I missed, I'll go ahead and cover it as we're, you know, putting together whatever parts. Uh, you know, wherever I may have missed something, but uh, I think that's a good summary of build considerations and, um, you know, things to, uh, to do to, to improve your build and to also ensure there's good longevity to it and that if you're doing this professionally that your customer will be happy and reduce the likelihood of comebacks. Okay, so what we'll do now is gather all the parts up that take bushings, put them on the other bench, and then I'll go ahead and R&R the bushings.